Okay, hello and welcome to the EEPROM 9, where we've got this, the one of the recent things I picked up. Now, Spoff first mentioned that it could be some sort of vibration meter and diddly or, I'm just going to call them DIY headshot, pretty much confirmed this. Although I can find no information on the actual unit itself, I've pulled out the front panel of it and started googling. So, let's have an overview of all these lovely bits and pieces that we have on it. So, shall we use the laser pointer for a bit of high-techness, or shall we just stick with the good old trusty screwdriver? I reckon we'll stick with the good old screwdriver. So first off, what we have is the meter. Now, because I'm parting this out, or pretty much I've done it, this is going to be the meter on my clickety click Geiger counter I want to work on. I got the Geiger tube a while back because I reckon it'd be awesome to have a homemade clickety click Geiger counter. Wee! Look at that! I love I love these analog meters. I absolutely bloody love them. I don't have any sort of old vintage display technology to be honest. Modern ones are a bit boring. <laughs> So, we'll start from the front and move back. These are, can you guess, switches! Let's put a point on the end of this actually. Do, 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 do. What point? There we go, we'll go with a sharp looking one, which is that one. Someone's been in, they used these because they're all muddled up in the wrong order. Question is who? No one except me has been near these things for months. But we have two switches. We also have one of these. A lovely twizzly switch, which unlike a lot of others, is actually not ill. It's exposed internally. I kept the knob for it as well on it. We have five variable resistors down here. Uh, this one says it's 10k, that one's 10k. These ones are hard to identify, but they look like they're all 5k. And of course, they're like multi turn, and then they move a spring like over that's like a worm gear, and it moves this slider along the carbon rod or whatever they use. These things, capacitors, more capacitors, these are electrolytes. What look to be resistors, 0.5%. These are very high precision resistors. 1% there's resistors. More resistors. More what? Are these caps? Let's just have a look at the front. Yeah, they're caps. A relay. For fuck's sake, let's do the focus. Do, 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 do. Hold it, there we go. Single pulse relay, nothing magic about that. And these, there's two ICs on this board, bearing in mind this is from the 60s as indicated. Uh, we've got some transistors, date code 6801, so it seems to be from 69, 68. And these can be removed. They're both the same type of chip. And you know what? Let's pause the camera and Google exactly what these are. Focus on it, goddamn you. Here we go, it's going, it's going, it's going. Let's put it focus, 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 focus. Oh, sodding health. Oh, come on. Focus on the fucking part number. There we go. MC1430G. Let's stop the camera and research that. Found a data sheet to it. Variant of M Motorola's data sheet, but essentially it's the same chip. As is suspected, it's an amplifier. An op amp, to be exactly correct, for those of who are very suspicious. So you can have a look at the data sheet. I might put a link to it in the description if anyone's interested. 
These seem to be ferrite coils. It's impossible to confirm at this point. Well, it's not impossible. We'll just do some continuity between them. But yeah, these are most likely ferrite cores. We've got some more caps. Lots of transistors. I'm not going to go through identifying all them. This looks like the power supply section of the board here. You've got two, b three big power transistors. Another cap there. Fuse resistor. This is a lot of the I.O. was. There's also some of the I.O. linked to it all the way to here. But you've got these, which are transistors, resistors, capacitors, usual. But there's this. Now, as I said, it was said to be a vibration meter. Now, there's a good chance that the actual sensor was is separate to the unit. This unit. But this could be a sensor, which leads me to get the pliers prior to the tab and take off the top and face whatever dangers may lurk within. Come on. There we go. Hang on, I've got a better idea. Screwdriver! Hooray for screwdrivers! Da -da -da -da. Flathead. They're good for all this 60s stuff and 70s stuff and my mouse is doing shit. Stupid thing. So we use that to initially get under them. Then we can use the pliers to actually move them into position. Then we can take this top metal thing off and see what's underneath, basically. And see exactly what this metal box is. It's got several pins linking to it underneath, so... And I really doubt it's going to be some sort of IC, and it's definitely not going to be anything digital, I can confirm that, it's bloody 60 there we're talking about. And digital in the 70s is pretty much just 7-4 logic for the most part. So we take this off and it is a... can this thing come off? It is a, so that comes out, that comes out. It looks like it's just another ferrite, yeah, it's just another ferrite cord transformer type thing. Yeah, that pretty much confirms it. The sensor will be external. That pretty much just confirms that. I thought, I had a suspicion it might be, but you never know for certain. So now let's put all these tabs down without injuring my fingers. Don't injure the fingers because it'll hurt. Like that. Good job my finger wasn't in the way of that. That could have been quite painful. Mind you, if you think that a bit of pain deters me from this stuff, no, because I've constantly injured and cut myself and stabbed myself with screwdrivers are doing sort of shit like this. A bit of pain has never deterred me from this sort of crap. Yeah, it just makes you jump and scream and swear when it happens. So yeah, that's pretty much an overview of this thing. The two chips are just two op amps. And they, I don't know about the dies inside, and I'm not cutting them open, although I do have my Dremel here. I want to use them. It'll be nice. And the battery's about to run out. So, this is where we call the video a day. And I hope you found it interesting. And thanks for you two, Spoff and DIY Headshot, for essentially confirming this to me. And industrial bit of equipment, well, there is a full-fledged engineering department to the university. So, yeah. Vibration testing. Stress testing on concrete, part of it. They do all sorts of wonderful stuff in the engineering. It's quite fascinating. I've spoken to quite a few tutors in there about some of the stuff, like the concrete testing of how they test it and stuff like that. It's awesome. Thanks for watching. They see electronics as black magic, the concrete testers. Well, one of them does. But nothing's black magic. It's all science to be discovered. Thanks for watching.